Hello everyone, welcome back to another video on Arduino Nano tutorial. So, so far in the series, we have covered uh, many components like we have covered LED, we have covered uh, buttons, we have covered uh, how to dim an LED, and we have also covered how to control the RGB LED. So, all these tutorials were focused on the components, right? They were not focused on uh, software specific or the programming specific uh, perspective of the Arduino. So in this tutorial, so we are going to focus uh, on a programming aspect, which uh, which is uh, array. So we are going to use arrays in this tutorial. All right. So let's get started. So I have already opened my sketch so as you can see i am using a new sketch for this one all right so we can just click on this to get a new sketch all right so first thing that we need to do is uh let us uh, save this sketch first all right and we are going to name it as arduino tutorial 7 all right you can choose any name and if you saw my previous video you'll remember that we cannot use uh, spaces in between the names and if we have used it the spaces the arduino ide will by default automatically convert the spaces to underscores so first of all let us define the pins that we are using to connect the leds So I'm going to use the constant int and I'm going to name it as 2. So since we are using from pin D2 to D11, so we'll start with a value of 2 and we'll go up to 11. All right. All right, so we have defined the pins. What we need to do is we need to uh, set up these pins. All right, so for that, we can use the pin mode function. And we need to do this for all of these pins, right? So this is also done. All right, so we have uh, defined 10 pins and we have also uh, set up the mode of the pins to be as output pins. All right, so next what I'm going to do is I'm going to define num underscore LEDs as 10 so uh, the benefit of using a defined value is so in the future let's say we want to change the number of leds to less or more and according to that we want to change the size of our array so we can simply change the value here and let me define the array also to define an array we can simply use the int and and we are going to pass num led inside it all right so uh, let's suppose that we wanted to change uh, the size of the array to something else or something other than 10 so instead of doing it here we can simply do it here right and if we are using the size of the array to control a loop uh, it will automatically change over there also. We won't be required to change this uh, value at different places. And it is uh, best practice to use uh, constants or define values for uh, literals or numbers, right? So instead of using 5 directly here, it is better to use a literal in place of it. All right. 
so uh, let us compile this code all right so i'm going to change it back to 10 save it let us just comply compile it so we are not uploading the sketch at the moment we are only compiling whether to, just to see that uh, everything is correct up to this point all right so uh, it is correct everything is compiled correctly so uh, next what i'm going to do is i'm going to use this array and uh, first of all i'll initialize this array to some values and since setup runs once before everything we are going to initialize the array uh, in this function right we are going to use a for loop so if you have done programming in c or c++ languages or java or python also you'll know that the index of the array starts from zero as opposed to one right so that's why I'm starting it from zero and index less than what is the max value? The max value is num underscore LED. So we are going to use that here. So you can see the benefit right here. Uh, suppose if we had used 10 here in place of this defined value, we would be required to uh, write that value here and if we change it we would be we would already require to change it at two places right so that's one benefit of using uh, the defined values so what i'm going to do is i'm going to initialize each of the values inside this array to zero uh, zero means that uh, or we can say that to uh, low value right right let us save it and compile it again just to be sure that everything is correct right so we have initialized the array uh, to be sure that our leds are on by default not sorry not on uh, they are off by default when this program loads all right so this is the loop so what i'm going to do is so I'm going to simply uh, uh, start a loop. I'll simply uh, switch on each of the LEDs once and I'll switch it off. All right, all right. So uh, let me again start a loop. Let me just copy it right from here. So it is faster than typing. Same thing over and over again. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch on the first LED. All right. And I'm going to store its value. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to store uh, alternate values in the ar array right so what i meant by that is so if index mod 2 equals to equals to 0 that means if our index is even or even we are going to place a high value in the array right and else we are going to place a low value in the array right so we have initialized the array so next what we are going to do is we are simply going to display this array on the output right so for that again we are going to use a for loop right So here is one more thing. I'm going to do one more thing, right? So we have 10 LEDs and we want to display 10 values over them. So I'm going to define one more array. All right. 
and name it output pins so we are going to store these variables inside this array right so we are going to remove this and then we'll be using this array to output the led pins right so for that I'm going to initialize the output pins array here. And I'm going to use one more variable here, right? Which is named as pin value. And I'm going to initialize it with two because the initial value of our pin is 2 and what we are going to do is we are going to use this pin value and also let us increment the pin value by 1 after each iteration and we are going to assign this pin value to this output pin value right and then again instead of using all these repetitive uh, statements we are going to use this one statement right and we are going to use this variable or the this location of the array and we are going to make it output right so uh, basically what i am saying here is first of all assign a pin value to an index of the output pins array right we are doing that here next what i'm going to do is use that uh, location of the array and initialize it as an output pin right so basically instead of doing these repetitive uh, statements 10 times what we are going to we are doing is we we are using the array to initialize our pins and we don't need these values also right and we are initializing the output so this is our pin array which points to different pins on the arduino and this is a, this is an array to store the data or to store what value we want to show on which pin right all right so let's quickly get back to our array right so let me use the digital write method or write digital write function and let me use output pins array here at index and what we want to output is that is uh, represented at this value right All right. So this is going to write a value and then what it is going to do is it is going to wait for 200 milliseconds before going over the next iteration, right? So uh, this is the program and after this we are like it is going to continue it forever so we are going to provide a delay of 500 milliseconds and then we are again going to initialize all the leds back to zero back to low well voltages right so that we can uh, again see this effect since uh, this loop function runs over and over in the Arduino. All right, so let us save this and let's compile it first and see if we have any error issues. So as you can see that we don't have any issues here, right? All right.
So uh, at this moment, I'm going to connect my Arduino to my system. Okay, so I have already connected the circuit. As you can see, we have uh, multiple LEDs with us this time. So I'm not going to go into the details how to create the circuit board because it is uh, not a difficult circuit to make and focus of this tutorial is not on circuit building but on the software part so but i'll still explain the circuit so we have 10 leds here and these are the negative terminals and these are the positive terminals right so each of the positive terminal is connected to one jumper cable here right we have 10 so i have used uh, a ribbon cable so it is easier to manage this ribbon cable all right and this wire right here is the uh, common and it is connected to the ground of the Arduino right so in the Arduino so we are using this ground right here to connect the ground and pin D2 to D11 we have connected these pins right the last pin is not connected as you can see right here so these pins are connected to uh, one of the LED starting from D2 all the way up to the D11 pin. All right. So what we are going to do is we are going to use the arrays and we are going to display uh, or power on these LEDs in many different ways. All right. So let's get to coding. Let us make sure that uh, all these trees are correct connect it correctly so we have chosen arduino nano and again the old bootloader bootloader and the com is also correct so let us upload it to the arduino and don't mind that uh, value that was coming on the leds so as you can see the alternating leds are glowing the thing here is that we are not able to see that the LEDs have changed their initial state, right? Because uh, we haven't provided any delay after this function, right? So I'm going, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this statement from there over here. And let's see what happens this time. Let us compile it and upload it. So you will see that alternating LEDs are glowing and there is one more thing, right? So everything is not as we expect the code to go for the first time. So uh, we need to output this array values to our digital output pins also, right? So for that, I'm going to use this array right here again, and I'm going to remove this delay from here let us upload it so as you can see this is looking better right right so this is a nice effect all right so let us make some changes to the code right so uh, this was just for testing that uh, all of our pins were connected correctly let us make some changes to this code all right so uh, so what i am going i am doing here is we are using the alternate ind indices to switch on the led to a high value or a low value right so uh, this time let me remove this or uh, let me comment it out and let us use a different approach right
So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use a random function with two values. So what it will do is it will return either zero or one, right? And we are going to uh, upload it. Uh, all right. So it will return either zero or one. So I've explained this random function in my previous videos also. If you haven't watched them, do watch them. All right. So let us uh, upload it and let's see what happens this time. So as you can see that the pattern is not uh, uh, same. It is uh, different each time uh, the loop is running, right? So why is that happening? It is because we have used the random function. All right. So that is it for this tutorial. And I would encourage you all to change the code and update the code uh, so that you can come up with different ideas, different than what I have already created. So I've also changed the code a little bit and I have created uh, an LED chaser circuit. So I'll upload the code and add a link in the description. You can go to the description to get that uh, code. Till then, watch what I have created. All right. So this is the LED chaser circuit and I'll add the link for it also in the description. So make sure you practice this and you come up with different ideas. So this is one of the ideas to utilize the arrays. All right. So that is it for this tutorial. If you enjoyed the video, do like it, share it with your friends and make sure to subscribe the channel to get the notification for the latest videos that I upload. Thank you.